What's up, everyone? Welcome to the latest episode of Power Spike. It's your boy D Gone along with Monty and Dom to break things down across the world of LOL esports. And uh, today is March 27th, just to give you a date. Playoffs have been set for LPL, LCK, and yes, for the second split of the LEC. We're almost done with the LCS. So this feels like we've got our things. Uh, our our storylines very clearly the things that we've got to hit this week monty yeah i mean it's it's easy we just do playoff previews right uh let me let me think we talk about which teams are actually good and going to win playoffs we have lck and lpl playoffs coming up and then we talk about how carmine corp and g2 and cloud nine are shit that's that's what we do that's the game plan all right perfect i'm down a lot of the time, you know, we we hold on out before telling you what's going to happen. But this one's a punch you in the face and let you know before we punch you in the face. <laughs> I guess tell you we're going to punch you in the face before we punch you in the face with all the action. Uh, this week, and just a couple things that came down this week that I wanted to touch on for, for me. One is there will be. I got to do this super cool as much as you might not like it, Monty, because Monty hates stickball. Super cool golf piece i guess that will run before the lcs finals with jet last year jet had his um uh let's go series for worlds where they went to different spots of korea this is an did extension of that series for lcs <laughs> uh yeah they did go so this time i guess we went golfing to talk about lcs last year they were on the train to talk about worlds and then they also went to the t1 facility to talk about worlds um but Rented out a course, got to play. There were drone shots. There were like uh, a ton of cameras. I literally felt like I wish I, I wish they would have just hired Dash with this fucking money. Can they just hire Dash with this money instead? I, <laughs> you know what? As much as I love Dash, that's not enough money to afford that. <laughs> um, uh, it is for it is for finals weekend. Let's put it that way. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. Maybe they do both. Who knows? But that'll come out, um, I think, Thursday or Friday. And it'll definitely, parts of it will play before finals. So keep an eye out for that. And then the other thing is, uh, got to sit down with Mortals Coach Sharks. So we got to tell a little bit all about that. So check that one out on my YouTube channel. Those are uh, the, the two things that took up most of my week. How's your trip in Europe been, Dom? Oh, it's been good. I'm in, enjoying the time zone. I've been somehow able to do even more LPL now. Like, I didn't even know there was that much LPL to, to go around. But yeah, I think that this is the split I've watched the most LPL ever. Um, so yeah, I, I have a full grasp on the entire region. With that, have you spent any time outside? What have you done Europe, though, European-wise? Um, well, I had a three-hour experience trying to launder my clothes yesterday. That was that was fun. Just dragging bags of laundry around Berlin to try to find a laundromat that would actually take them. That was fun. Um, I've been to like restaurants. I did an escape room a couple of days ago. Uh, yeah, I haven't really seen any sites, but we've just went out to like restaurants, been to like the gym, like normal stuff. Why were they not accepting your laundry? Uh, because Berlin is a shithole. But I knew this before I came here. Okay. It is known. That's a known fact. <laughs> yeah, Ber it's Berlin is just charm. like... Yeah, it's part of the charm. It's fine. Monty, outside of our grind, because you're the biggest grinder here for LFN, what have you done? I, I just want to get a, an IRL check with the my, my co-hosts. He had a third baby. So... <laughs> this one this one just faded very quickly or was with a different woman i mean you pick, you pick <laughs> oh, yeah, okay well, all right we're gonna send this to Susie and see what she says <laughs> oh god <laughs> um uh no i don't do anything be gone i i i went to the gym today did some muay thai mm -hmm. uh and otherwise i wrote emails and took care of my kids are you are you a push push pull legs guy? What is your gym your gym setup like? How do you normally work your uh, your workout? Yeah, we want to know how to have as many kids as you. <laughs> yeah. Right now we're not <laughs> doing. We're talking about the gym. <laughs> Never mind. I'm trying to follow along. <laughs> <laughs> the old in out in out. 
Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> as they would say in a clockwork orange. Um, so when I go to the Muay Thai gym, Egan, I do Muay Thai. So I'm not, I actually do some kettlebell oh. training there as well. Okay. But, you know, that, so n- normally I'm just training in Muay Thai. Okay. Doing pad work, doing drills, jumping rope. It's a lot of cardio. Don't get a fight with Monty is the moral of the story. Uh, Tom, that was super funny, man. <laughs> that that one that one caught me. Uh, all right. Well, one way to stay healthy and stay on top of your game, which is why I was going with the workout thing, is uh, getting on to a routine and adding in one of our partners of the show, AG1. When I was on the course over at AG1, everyone was like, you have an AG1 sponsorship? And I was like, I do. See? so even then it's even a, like a like a social a social thing but as monty and Everyone i said was before, impressed by by dgon's ag1 sponsorship they were as monty dom and i have said before we have ingrained this into our morning routines it helps me with my gut health i promise i i'm telling you after three days you can tell a difference that you're going regularly and i feel like my body's keeping the things i need to and getting rid of the things that i don't uh, and it has been so easy to use along with um, other supplements like my creatine that I use for the day, Monty. Uh, how do you, have you implemented it on him? Yeah, I mean, same, same, same. Uh, basically, like I enjoy drinking in the morning. Uh, it's great, like with unflavored creatine. The, the taste is super nice. You get all your prebiotics, like probiotics, vitamins. It's just really, really like all in one. It's, a, it's nice to get a little hydration like when you wake up as well. So all you have to do is just pop a scoop in there with water. Uh, as Degan and I have discussed, it is best to put the water in first and yep. then the scoop. <laughs> do not do it the other way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you do it the other way, it just gets stuck in there. It, and then it's, you're not, like it's not great. Constantly shaking <laughs> it, it and stuff. Yeah. But it, it does it does actually liquefy very nicely uh, as long as you put the water in first. So that's that's what I would recommend. Definitely supports immune health. It's a great thing to drink in the morning. It's a, it, you know, I, I enjoy it, you know, take it first thing after I wake up. Cause you know, normally I was taking creatine at that time anyway. So this is like even better. Yeah. And then Dom, you've already touched on the flavor of it compared to other green juices. Yeah, definitely. The, the flavor is, is, is the most unexpected uh, part for me. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just like a nice, like fruity blend. Tastes way better than yeah. it looks. I'll tell you that. Like you think it'll be <laughs> like a spinach drink, but it's not. It's not close to that. So I would say that that's like that the thing good. that I would, I would, uh, I would point out is it. It tastes nothing like spinach. <laughs> yes, that's again most green juices. It looks like it, what it they, tastes they like. It tastes like you're fries. eating the earth. In my experience, it feel <laughs> it. It really tastes super earthy generally. <laughs> Really brings you back like to like that. one to two years old, you know? No, I mean, like the thing is normally green juices, they, they, it's like you're paying a price. You're like, oh, this must be healthy. So that's why I'm willing to like drink this garbage. Like that's not how, how this feels. Like you can actually drink it and it doesn't feel like you're, you're, you, you know, suffering through it in order for like health benefits <laughs> later on. That's right. Again, we have it as part of our routine. We would like to invite you guys to do so as well. So if you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash LFN Legends. That's drinkag1.com slash LFN Legends. Check it on out. Uh, it, it'll definitely add to your life. Thanks to our new friends over at AG1. All righty, everyone. Uh, let's get on into it. You might need to use some cardio to get ourselves out of the burning building that is this week's Everything is on Fire because Monty is about to be unleashed. Dom is coming back double-barreled for his boy Yamato because Carmine Corp sucks. So let's get into it. Our first segment of the day, everything is on fire. Oh, they said just oh, fire your motto. <laughs> they said just fire your motto and be fine. And that, that hasn't been the case at all here, Monty. Um, you know, 
who could have guessed that <laughs> firing a veteran coach, but keeping the players who are clearly not LEC level Terrible. was go Dog was shit. going to be <laughs> was going to be mm-hmm. the solution uh, to this roster. And guess what, guys? They ended up in the exact same place this split. And of course, Kometo is now saying, "Oh yeah, we're we're definitely going to make changes, guys." I can't talk about them yet, um, but Kometo. Hello, you already missed out on the changes you should have already made. Remember when nobody wanted Niski and you could have had Niski? Remember when Trimby was on the analyst desk in winter and maybe you could have offered him a contract, but no, you had to just subjugate the rest of us to all of this dog shit for yet another split with all of the same problems, no shot calling, no synergy, poor individual performances, and now you're just going to make changes? Now... Tell me, Kamado, tell me, what changed? Is your eye test just completely fucking busted? Why didn't you see this with your fucking eyes in winter? And how are you surprised in making changes now? Because logically, if you couldn't see it in winter, you should, be, you should still be blind to it right now. And you should be running it the fuck back, man. You should be running it the ba- fuck back for another split, which admittedly would be kind of hilarious. But... It also helps ruin LEC enjoyment. So maybe maybe don't do that. It depends on what you watch LEC for. For me, it increases the LEC enjoyment. Like, I love watching <laughs> Carmine Corp just be terrible because the thing about Carmine Corp is it's the same thing as Mad Lions. Like, you have the same exact type of fan base where you say anything negative. It's like, there was a post where, like, where Cajun, you know, Cajun is like the most mild person when it comes to criticizing. Like he he does not like cross any boundaries when it comes to criticizing uh, teams. He does it in a respectful way, et cetera. There was like posts about finding Cajun. It's like, what do you mean find him? Like, what is the implication? Oh, we're going to kill Cajun because he like he he fucking insulted our team in our minds. Like it's it's just crazy the type of stuff that, that we've seen um, out of the fan base. And the thing that's so crazy is like, even though they're two and seven, they're actually worse in my mind. Like they, they oh, yeah. look at least they like were a winning early team. games. At least they were winning early games last split. This time they just lose a lot of the time from the start and they have worse drafts. So yeah. great. I mean, I would, I would say that like Cabo shard, this split was actually better than last split. Like his laning got better. And if he laned at an acceptable level in certain games last split, they would have got more wins. So it's like somehow the players improved kind of like i would say the average level when you compare how targamus was running it down in winter to how much he's running it down now i would say he's also playing better so you have two of the players that are playing slightly better and the results are still the same so it's like the team actually functions at a worse level than it did in winter and to me that's just mind-blowing because i just didn't even think that that was possible like they find (laughs) the most unique ways to lose that i've ever seen in my entire life and like Sokin is is just not it, man. This player is just so fucking overrated by people. Like people were saying like he would be one of the best best mid laners in LEC. Like I thought he, he he would be serviceable. I thought that he would be able to play like Azir and like Oriana and Nico at like an okay level. Maybe he'd be like Frescawi level. Like Frescawi now, now when Frescawi was having his, his his run in winter playoffs. Like I thought he would pr- probably be Frescawi level. I mean, he seemed to be able to lane against Frescawi when they were in ERLs together. Um but now when I watch him play, it just looks like he can never figure out how a fight should be played. It doesn't matter whether his job is like flanking on a collie or playing front to back or holding position when it's karma and like karma queuing them as they enter or playing Nico and trying to find an engage. It like doesn't matter what his job is in the fight. He will always fuck it up. Like he doesn't do any part of playing the mid lane role in fights well, which is just like, so what do we actually have him here for? Like, he's not good at following up. He's not good at starting situations. He doesn't control space well with mages. He doesn't have good enough mechanics to play assassin. Like, actually, what does he do well? <laughs> uh, he, 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 he does French well and at choose being... Gun. And choose gun. And, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he does well at being Kometo's friend. That's ah. very important in the Carmine Corp organization although i didn't get niski the job he was also kometo's friend but unfortunately he's bffs with saken so um that that mid lane role was already taken it's it's pretty frustrating to see this we have seen it before from erl mid laners specifically coming to lcs and struggling we got to see with aka we got to see with blue 
like Saken kind of feels like he's in that same category right now. At what point do you roll the dice and go try to find someone else in the, I guess, so in, in the uh, NBA Masters system? Two, or two months ago. Grow? Two months ago. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if I believe, I wouldn't like, look, the thing is, I don't know why people have to always find the new player in EMEA Masters. Like, there's plenty of players that I think would just make the team better immediately that are known just entities. Just get Bo, Bo with leader. Get leader on this team and let Bo sure. and him just... Sure, leader's one of the names I was thinking Go about. after people. Do you remember that there was a team that was double 10th place that were just absolute fucking garbage, disgusting last winter and spring that ended up picking up Abadage and Limit? Does anyone remember, like, this team? <laughs> like, Exile was literally one of the worst teams. They picked up Abadage and Limit, players that are not great, but they're serviceable, and most importantly, they know how to play in the LEC. Abadage knows what his job is in fights. Even if he's not the best at executing it, he still understands what he should be doing in games, which is valuable, super valuable for a team like K-Corp. I think that if you put Limit and Abadage on this team tomorrow, they would at least be like making fucking playoffs. At least they could be making top eight pretty easily, like almost guaranteed you're making top eight. Maybe you can make a run like top six, top four. I mean, who knows like how bad LEC is in summer. But like, I think that, that that's that's a, a, a combination that makes sense. And it's pr like those players have proven they can play at LEC, in LEC recently. So, like, I don't understand why we need to keep on finding, like, the new ERL talent. It's like, ah, oh, but Abadage oh, might never be the best. It's like, okay, neither are these other fucking players. Like, Sokin's <laughs> definitely not ever going to fucking be the best. Like, I don't like, I don't think Jackie's is being the best anytime soon either. Like, why not just take the players that are actually good enough to play at LEC? Like, stop this fucking rookie obsession. The, the only thing I could think of is money right it costs a lot to these players are playing for more. nothing like i don't even think that this is true by the way i don't think that abadage is like yeah i just need a hundred thieves out i think these players just want to be play they're playing right now for fucking peanuts in like sk gaming prime or some bullshit like, they're not getting paid right now just let them fucking play in the lec man i, I want to see the best players in europe in the lec that's all i'm asking for that's literally all I've wanted this entire time. <laughs> I just want the best players in Europe to be playing in the tier one competition. Well, there's a team that we're, we're looking at uh, Trimby and, and Saken, right? Trimby? Those, those are probably... You mean Targamas. But Targamas yes. and, yeah, Targamas and yeah, Saken, yeah. right? Well, there's a team who's doing pretty good who currently has two of those guys on the books. At those roles over in Team Heretics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I mean, look, just, I, you know, Kometo just kind of being like, hey, perks, you know, I'm big, yeah. you're big. No. Like, we, we got no. The... <laughs> yeah, no, just that's not gonna uh, hole in our mid lane. <laughs> I mean, why not? Literally, literally, your team is then four fifths of vitality of the t vitality that got 10th place. <laughs> Fuck it. Who cares? That's hilarious. I mean, I would literally Bring rather watch that vitality team than this team. Like, at least it was like kind of funny when they ran it down. Like, this is just sad. Res resurrecting failed vitality. Incredible. You yep. know? Oh, man. That would get us another opportunity to use the bow smoking meme. <laughs> oh, that was, that was one of the best ones for last year. Uh, Carby Corp's a dumpster. Here's, there's a couple of solutions. Monty, I know you said two months ago is when they should have made the move. It are do you are there other moves that you would like for them to see? Are there other players, other well, roles look, that you want to see? Look, it's just like you buy this slot, right? And doing well and winning secondary league championships does not mean that those same players are going to be equipped to handle the LEC. And frankly, like most of the players, you know, to Dom's long-standing point, by the time that you are in your early 20s. If you haven't actually broken through in a big way into the professional scene, you probably are not going to do it um, because most of the time that talent, it, you know, teams are not lazy about scouting talent on the ladders. They can see they have they, they mine the ladders for data and they can see if there's a new player that is suddenly in challenger and then they go and they talk to these people and they find out who they are. Right. And most of the time they can even figure out if it's a, if it's an account of an existing player simply because of patterns within, you know, key bindings of summoner spells and like champion pools and everything like that. Um, 
So if it's actually a new player and not just an alternate account for an existing player, it's not that hard for them to get in contact with them and figure out who these people are. And so if you have been kind of wasting away in ERLs and you're in your early to mid 20s, there's probably not a very high ceiling on your performance. And I, I just don't see it as really a viable option to, you know, to continue to dip into these younger players when there are players that we know, to Dom's point, already exist and have been LEC level at some point in the past. Abadagi is an LCS champion. Um, the reason he got picked up was because when he was on Schalke, he was looking really good on a kind of a lower tier team. I do think that he fell off since then, but his floor is still a lot higher than what we see with I mean, Saken. He was literally in the finals and, of LEC l l like six months ago. He was playing the finals of LEC. Sure. I guess like seven, eight months, actually, technically. But you get the point. Like two splits ago, he was in the finals of LEC. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's it is weird um, to make these decisions. And also when you go and you spend million, tens of millions of dollars on an LEC slot like Carmine Corp did. You need to take the best available players. And the GMing was not good in Europe. Not good by Carmine Corp, but not good by many other people either. And Niski was just cast off and ended up on SK. He is Kometo's friend. You are telling me that you didn't have a shot at, of course he had a shot at getting Niski. Niski would, like, think about Niski and Bo for a second. Niski would actually enable Bo's aggression, and it would be probably a pretty good fit, stylistically. But no. This key just goes to SK doesn't even make any sense because as we hear it, Kometo just is friends and has loyalty to Saken. But bro, I know you're a streamer and you got your little gang gang of people that you go around with and your buddies on stream. It is different running a professional team. You are trying to create wins and loyalty. I hate to say it is fucking irrelevant. It is irrelevant to the performance of your roster. And so coming in thinking that this guy was going to be good when you had already seen him in LEC and knowing that there was all this talent left over. And like, what is your loyalty to Targamas? Like maybe he did make an offer to Trimby and I just don't know about it, but, but surely you should have mixed up the roster at some level, right? And not just gone after the coach who was actually doing for the most part, quite good drafts in my opinion, and is a much more known quantity in the world of professional league of legends than basically not, it's not even basically than anybody else on your roster. Yamato is more experienced, has had more success than literally any fucking player on your roster. That's just true. Uh, yeah, that's don't have too much to add to that one. It just feels pretty, feels pretty doomed right now for Carmen Corp. There's a couple of options for UKC fans to go yell at uh, Kometo to make. <sighs> I think this. So who does split. he get now? That's the, that's the thing is like he he missed on a lot of the opportunities that he had. He missed the opportunities. When when we were, he over still has Golden opportunities Guardians. though. Like he literally still has opportunities that are like not I mean, as great opportunities, but it's like right. They're still better. Sure you can still make the team better it's it's not hard but i just need to i need to see this like this random rookie up so there's so many rookies that i see that are just clearly not ready for lec like look at jackie he's like maybe he's good in the future he's not ready for lec right look at zoelis that guy is like he is just not ready to be playing in the lec it just is what it is we got to do something different man we really just need to do something different when we were at golden guardians uh, and probably week four, week three of like summer split, you just had to pack it in, right? So I guess in mid split, you had to decide like, hey, are you going to splash money or are you just going to call it a day for this year? Given that this is your first year as an org in the space. I wonder if that's starting to cross the mind of the Carmen Corp faithful. Like, do we try to make one more big splash in our first year or do we just, as you guys said, stick with it? or find cheaper alternatives and, you know, say we tried because we made a couple you, of name changes. You a hundred, you don't try to like Carmine Corp has such an insane fan base. You don't do anything that is not immediately affecting the team positively. In my opinion, I think you try to make it good, like as best you can immediately. Like you have Callist who you're going to probably be moving up regardless at the end of the year. But for this next split, 
what can you do to make the team competitive? Like, you don't need to break the bank to get Abadage and Limit on your team. Like, I'm I'm okay with giving Cobble Shard one more split. I mean, make, like, fuck, fuck it, bro. If they really hate Bo, at least bench Bo and let them go 0-9 so we can get some more content out of it. Like, like just do something, man. That's all I care about. Yeah. I, I just wonder if, like, oh, the loyalty to Seiken is what's important for the longevity of whoever takes a spot in the future. If that makes sense. It's like, yeah, I think yep. that's, that's what I'm wondering. All right. Well, Carmen Corp has been a fire, uh, a team also in Europe that, uh, uncharacteristically on a losing streak G2 at the top of the standings, you know, perennially now finding their way in third place as we locked in playoffs, uh, what did you make of their final week run here, Dom? Um, well, I mean, I definitely think they were trying things out. I feel like G2 just has these, these weeks where I feel like they get like a little, like too experimental. And then when they lock in for playoffs, they just run the region. Um, it was definitely like not a I good mean, look. I, I feel like you should know that your before you play rogue and it doesn't need experimenting that a comp with top Rexi, Ivern and karma <laughs> with a rel smolder bot lane literally fucking does nothing and cannot fight until smolder gets stacks. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, it's, it's like the look, least, it's like the least skirmish comp ever created. Wait, did they have, was it, was it rel or was it, um, what was rel support? Oh, it was rel with it this was one. Rel, Dude, it was Rel, Smolder, Karma, Ivern, Top Rek'Sai into Rogue. It's literally like the do nothing for 25 minutes comp, but they tried to do things and then just lost every skirmish because they would stand around with like Ivern, Karma, and Rel and have no consistent damage and just lose 3v3s. It was hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that in, in this type of comp, like, uh, I don't know why LEC is so bad at doing this. Like, all you need to do is you pair your Karma with a Bruiser. Like it's so basic. Yeah, you play you play Viego in the jungle. This is I think or this you is play a very Zinjiao. different. Like <laughs> sure, yeah. That's or you great. play any type of bruiser. Like you can even run Volibear there. You just want some bruiser sure. that benefits because like Karma still functions as an enchanter in like two v twos and stuff like that, where you have shields and yep. stuff, and you can make somebody yep. stronger. But it's like yep. when you have an totally Ivor with a Karma, you can literally just never <laughs> fight. Tank it, 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 it was, really feels this like game was hilarious. You take yeah. the shield. The, 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 funny, the, the funniest, shield. it was also just the draft that was hilarious. Like the first three picks for Rogue on blue side were like Oriana, Senna, Nautilus. They're just like, what happens if we give them all these comp these 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 picks? And then we pick a comp that can't do fucking anything. And even so, they were still in it after Smolder got 225 stacks. Like they were only like I think a thousand gold down or something like that in the mid game. So yeah, in spite that, of how hilarious, massive, massive throw from from Rogue. We're like Rogue sure. was trying to prove sure. like no, we are the worst team in LEC. Like let <laughs> let me show you guys like how fucking bad we are. Like it was impressive. I mean, yeah, I mean it did show how bad Rogue was, but hilariously, like G two actually was at points in this game, shockingly maybe able to win it. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you, Dom. I mean, I look at G2 and I see this comp and I'm like, they are definitely not picking these compositions like they did against Vitality and Rogue in playoffs. And also how much does it actually matter right now? These games are pretty irrelevant. Like G2 was already qualified for playoffs. They're going to be confident that they can beat anybody in the bracket. So who cares? You might as well just like do weird shit now. Uh, figure out, I mean, I, like I said, I don't know why you would ever need to actually run this composition that they played against Rogue, because I think it's just dog shit. Uh, but apparently they felt they needed to run it. Um, and I, I think that it was a little experimental. It was a little bit of happy gaming, but I still think G2 is overwhelmingly just going to run over people in playoffs. A little bit I'm of a false alarm, you know, I, I Every now and then, we just to keep everyone on their toes. Everything's on fire. Just kidding. That that's the G two one. Well, G two. What, what what? I hear a lot of like, oh, G two's bad now, Monty. I'm like, what? Oh, they're bad. Like, are we really? They're only bad compared are, are, to not LEC teams. That's how it works. Are, are are because they lost a couple of games that were pretty irrelevant for them, and we're also counting best of ones. Like, are you really going to tell me that if? They played a best of three versus Rogue. The Rogue is going to win this series. 
Like they barely won the game with the shit draft that, and like they got fucking patch 14, five exodia comp. Um, like it just doesn't happen again. I think G2 will turn it on for the playoffs. And by the way, guys, I hate to say it, but it doesn't even matter if G2 do well in these playoffs because they already qualified for MSI guys. Mm -hmm. They can fuck around forever and still show up in China for MSI. Um, I think that actually is potentially one of the flaws with the, the split system in Europe is that sure you get the lowest seed at MSI, but having the winter team just automatically qualify so far in advance is I, I know you want to give stakes to the winter split, but it also creates a situation where teams are not really motivated to play in spring that much in outside of, of course, world's point. I mean, it's, it's glorified scrims for them. It's literally just glorified right, scrims. Basically, especially these best of ones, especially when you've already qualified for playoffs, especially when it's best of ones. Like I think G2 is going to turn it on and be just fine in the playoffs. Yeah, they've earned the right. Kind of like how I mean, Cloud9 normally does. They've earned look, the right. I would say the biggest thing about G2 is like, none of their competition looks good. Like this, this, this week of LEC was like, it, it was like, the, it's like whoever ended up getting first place would have some type of punishment administered to them. That's how it looked with how the teams were playing. Like it looked like no one wanted first place. There was nothing that anyone could do to get first place. Like, all right, now Fnatic's got to win. Oh, they can't win. Oh shit. Like Fnatic lost and got first. I mean, like oh, if G2 just wins and Vitality won. Like it felt like if anyone won, they could just get first place, but no one wanted first place. It was so fucked up. So like, it, it doesn't really matter, man. Like all these teams are six and three. None of the teams that are supposed to be like competing with G2. Like the main team I'm looking at is how does Fnatic look? Like does Fnatic look like they're good? No, Fnatic looks fucking terrible right now as well. So which one of these teams is actually going to be able to beat G2 when it matters? You think Vitality is beating G2 when it matters? You think Heretics is beating G2 when it matters? Like... <laughs> Honestly, may, like Mad Lions is four and five. Maybe, maybe they could fuck it. Maybe they have enough confidence in their team to actually take a win. But like, I just don't believe in these teams, man. I can't imagine is why the same way I can't imagine. Uh, I can't imagine for Scowie beating Caps in a best of five. I can't imagine Zwyru beating Caps in a best of five. I, I just, I, it just doesn't compute. It doesn't work in my head. I just can't see it happening. Well, uh, again. G2 is like what I was trying to say earlier. G2 has earned the right to like uh, be the, the king of the hill until knocked off because it is so hard to imagine these things with the type of play that's been happening in the LEC. But G2 has been dominant. They've taken down everyone in front of them as they clearly are experimenting. Rek'Sai top lol, um, which was played in, uh, was it? Uh, it was played today. I mean, they LPL. played it in one. They, yeah. they smurfed, but yeah. It, yeah, it was played in LPL today as well. Um, I mean, I don't, I think it's a very annoying pick. And I think I really actually liked the composition G2. I didn't like it in the second game they played it, but the first game they played it, it made sense when paired with the Viego. Cause like Viego, Annie Draven, like your single target CCing and Draven ult and Rek'Sai ult have executes to get Viego resets on low targets. So I don't think it's terrible in these team fights because it's accomplishing a goal of getting Viego resets in team fights. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the Rex I top is literally just Udyr 2.0. Like you have to understand. Like, how to use lane. It. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's just, you can't ever move it. Right. It's just an, it's just an immovable champion in lane. So what that means is that you're going to end up forcing the enemy to take a bad base timer. You're probably going to have guaranteed grubs. You're going to like have the ability to get to generate a lead early game on enemy teams. And then it's about like, can you use that time that you have, like the extra time where the enemy has to base to get your team far enough ahead that the fact that Rek'Sai is not doesn't have provide immediate value the same way the, um, that like a champion like Orin would in a team fight where like Orin can just press R and boom, there you have a team fight like Rek'Sai needs to like position. Well, you need to like get an, a knockup. You need to be able to go in, take damage, then use the passive to sustain because that's actually the broken part of Rek'Sai. So you have to be able to, to take a fight and, and, make the fight long enough to use the abilities that you have same way with Uder. You have to abuse the fact that you have tankiness in the form of uh, your double W you have a bunch of shields. You need to be able to leverage this for an advantage um, over time, which is possible. Like if you can do that, then the champions are going to be broken. Like I think that the idea of a champion, like being weak because you get outscaled by another champion in lane, 
like but you have control over everything that happens for like 15 minutes of the game i think that that's always been a broken thing it's why i've always thought that like renekton was good in in pro play like that's why i love what lpl teams play renekton because it feels like they're able they they're able to generate enough of a lead that it doesn't matter if renekton doesn't scale evenly to an orn or something the renekton is going to be up like 2k gold on the orn it's like it, you don't need to scale evenly when you have more money when you have like like more items like you're not scaling on the same you're it's not like if you're not scaling with the same amount of gold you're scaling with increased gold which is a concept that i feel like people are completely lost on so rex light top i think is actually good it's nerfed um i believe 14 7 is it nerfed um, they announced that there were nerfs coming but it's yeah, yeah there's it's nerfs like coming so i mean it will be nerfed it'll be it'll be nerfed on 14 7 but i believe the playoffs will all be on 14 6 right because they start yeah, this week uh LC, lck playoffs are also 14 6 that are starting this week so, so. it's gonna be good like this this champion is going to be yeah good it, in it's playoffs. also just the, the build on it is also just very annoying because if you can stay alive in these team fights, like once you hit three items, once you get Sunfire, Sterix, and Spirit Visage, you know, the way that Rek'Sai's passive works now is that you start, if with a full Fury Bar, you get 12% of your max HP back and it scales by level. Um, so once you're level 16, it's 20%. So if you're level 16 and you have all of these items and you have 4,000 HP and a spirit visage, you can actually, with a full bar, heal like a thousand HP in three seconds and then go back in, like stack do it, it again, again with three, with three, with, if you hit your three Qs and then do it again. I mean, so, you, you don't even plus, need to hit three cues. Like your knockup, like also like counts a, as fury generation. Like you can auto auto and then auto reset with your cue. So like you have so much ways to generate yep. fury. And the main problem is the same exact problem that we had with Udyr, which is just that these players that are now playing these champions don't have any experience playing the champions. Like they're not players that have hundreds of games of Rek'Sai. Like these guys have never played Rek'Sai before. So they don't understand fundamentally how to play the champion and they're not good at maximizing uh, the amount of of effectiveness you can get out of the they can't make a perfect amount of space they either are making too much space and they die or they're like not doing enough with their hp bar they just can't accurately predict how, the limit that they need to be playing at in order to make the champion useful the same way that people struggled with it on udir yeah so, and sterix also you get the extra 25 percent of the shield from spirit visage which then allows you to build more fury which then gets your hp bar back up um I, and the other thing that can't be understated in pro play is the tremor sense like having the ability to scout like that uh, is any kind of vision control like that is super powerful in pro play. Um, so it's just kind of a little bonus that you get with the rec side that might be a little bit overlooked because that is probably going to start to be meaningful as more rec side games end up being played. So then what is the takeaway from G2's learnings from it then? Like if, if I mean, you're you can't play it with a do nothing, minutes, you, you it's the same way you can't you play with a play. do nothing. You can't do it with a do nothing like champion in the jungle. Like I agree with Dom. You want to play it with a Viego or a Jin Zhao or somebody because the advantage you get in the two v two and skirmishing is the ability to charge up your fury and then I mean you you're always full HP in lane, right? With you're your grasp between your grasp, yeah. But so like any skirmish that you take, you're probably going to have an HP advantage against the other top laner, um, and then you know, you actually have some some damage to put out. It doesn't work with Ivern. It's basically, you know, Ivern Karma is not what you want with it. Um, but if you have, you know, the composition that G2 ran before, which was like Draven, Annie, Viego, all of a sudden it looks a lot better. I mean, it's the same thing with, with Udyr, right? Like if you had an Udyr top, you wouldn't run an Ivern Karma. I mean, you'd never run an Ivern <laughs> Karma, period. Let's be honest. This is just a fucking so dodge shit. in mid-jungle, period. Like it's just so <laughs> absolutely terrible. There's, But it's like you especially wouldn't do it when you have a do-nothing oh, top God. laner. Like the only time that that would make any sense is if, it, if it's like you're playing around some type of beast carry top laner. So it's just the same problem where it's like people just are not good. And I think that in LEC, maybe Rek'Sai dies off the same way Udyr did. Because LEC teams are not good at leveraging the advantage of like their top Keen, laner into like Keen is creating, one like thousand percent camps. playing this. By the way, Keen is a thousand percent playing this in this LCK playoffs. I promise you, he is playing this. I mean, I can see it. Like he he's one of the people that was able to actually like that's that's something that Keen's actually good at. I mean, that's why I feel like his Renekton has always been his best champion. Like he understands how to leverage the fact that he's stronger than you to make time for his teammates to do things. He he also played Udyr probably more than anybody in the LCK, at least yep. among the good teams this this year. Ugh.
you so you you said you you wouldn't you wouldn't draft uh <clears throat> oh god what did you say you wouldn't draft karma ivern uh karma ivern <laughs> i'm just thinking of it in that I mean, like meme <laughs> format you wouldn't you wouldn't steal a movie you wouldn't down you know download an mp3 it, it was really that that g2 game was like really painful because they also just opted into the skirmishes it was like it was like hey guys you picked a shit draft let me show you exactly how shit it is it's like they were they could have just walked away but they were like hmm maybe we should skirmish i'm like no don't do that yeah but that, yeah, that's kind of how g2 like g2 always <laughs> operates like that where because they feel like they're better than their opponents all the time and like for i mean they, they pretty much are in lec right like they just have five be better players than any every other team in lec pretty much all the time they just feel like they can do things that their comp doesn't allow them to do they're like oh we can outplay like it's close enough that like our player diff will compensate for the champion diff that the enemy team has in their favor it, yes and if they did lose one of those skirmishes, Monty, the the the, the mental would break. <laughs> we got like <laughs> out shielded to death. Uh, I, I could see G two trying to do that. Um, yeah, well, that was everything's on fire in jest for G two, but uh, in truth for KC, as yet again, Cometo and the rest of uh, the uh, French fans and the KC army will be left to figure out what to do for one more split in the year um i like that we were talking about the draft uh because one thing i i didn't do, i haven't done a good job of this year in our show is going back on comments before and so last week i asked because uh, dylan falco he made that draft obviously great coach maybe not the best draft here great but drafter great but no no he's great at drafting almost all of the time this was just terrible okay uh terrible uh in this one specific side uh last week we talked about great na coaches and i think all of us landed on zix and so one of our top comments from last year or from last week was uh the zix tsm fail team in season nine was a i guess a quote-unquote super team because they had broken blade that came on over you had bjergsen you had sven and then it was acadian smoothie and then that whole split ended up becoming a massive mess for TSM. That was when then Greg came in and Greg was supposed to start. His wrist hurt. They brought in Acadian. Going into playoffs, they threw in what eventually became MVP Spica. Um, and then midway through the split, Peter Zhang Tang came over. Zix leaves to go to 100 Thieves and then brings 100 Thieves to the championship. It was a very cool, uh, I guess, circumstances to lead to all the pressure that then led to a redemption arc there for Zix, who then, you know, uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, cool, cool to see. Um, oh, wait, no, no, no. He didn't find success. Let's see. Zix left to join 100 Thieves straight afterwards to coach I Will Dominate's Twitch chat and his favorite teams, Gold Star, Rioma, and Stunt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I forgot about that. I, I, I just assumed it was playoffs playoff six but no it was uh tommy boy and the gold stars those are our coaches yep and a sometimes <laughs> even then they get it wrong six um, is a good, i think six is a good coach though um i i mean he he did go on to success with eg and valorant like i he he was he worked with me uh, uh on clg um so i enjoyed working with him there that is so cool for him to be a multi again wasn't the head coach but definitely was a huge part of success that led him to become uh, hired this season uh, at 100 Thieves, but the multidisciplinary title winner, Monty. Is there, did I bring, did we talk about this before? Like, has anyone else kind of done that before? I mean, Reach did it as a player and coach of Dodgen. A different game. Broodwar player. Broodwar, oh. he was a Broodwar player. Oh, okay. Broodwar Re Reach is and... a it, it, Reach is a legendary Protoss player in Broodwar. Um, and he was one of the early coaches on, on Najin. Um, I'm sure there are like, there are other coaches to probably in the MVP organization, uh, who have done it on multiple titles. Um, there, there are people who have come from, there were some of the overwatch coaches that came from like, here was the storm and stuff that had been having a lot of success, um, in other, in MOBAs and then switching to FBS. So it's not unheard of. It's not unheard of. Okay. Uh, 
I guess most. But it's mostly reasons. it's the the reason is that we talk mostly on the Korean side about this is because they've had a scene long enough and with multiple enough games to like have professional players become coaches in different games and then also have coaches like switch games. Um, so it's much more common in Korea. Uh, just to check on in, Ryoma is playing in the PCS on Antic Esports. So PCS, God bless. He's playing yeah. in OCE, bro. It's it's considered <laughs> PCS now. Yeah, I mean they They're played their playoffs in PCS playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I also, I, also looked, I, I also did some uh, scouting on Keen's solo queue account, and guess what? He's playing. It's a bunch of fucking oh. Rexi. So it's definitely coming in the playoffs, guys. <laughs> Look at that. Monty is his own data system and 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 uh <laughs> tracking system of solo queue players. So that was actually my roommate's job. He he did that for one of the uh, LCS teams. He is no Which longer one? doing that. I, I'm not gonna reveal, but <laughs> he did it for one of the teams that made playoffs. They they found success. They did all right, find all right, success. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Um if you want to be successful when you dress up, check out our friends over at AG1. There we go. Bam! So good. <laughs> Into the AM. AM. But yeah. A AG1. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. It's early morning. It's okay. Yeah, okay. All right. He, he meant to say, he meant to say into the AM, guys. You want to uh, find success. You are. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Boom. Sorry, into the AM. <laughs> I'm, I'm we we love we love we love into the am here at last three nations see uh, uh D Dion's actually see we talk about their graphic tees and i've got one of the like simpler designs on right now very comfortable t-shirt very high quality Dion's rocking the bomber they have I told bombers. you guys about it last week but now <laughs> i'm actually wearing it. this i do wear this when i go on dates it is very successful it is very. Uh, do, do do you get comments, Digan? Do you get comments? Yes. Do your dates yes. like your yeah. bomber? They very do. good. They do. Obviously, <laughs> everyone has a black bomber, so I went with this like a uh, navy colored bomber. It went great, and then I showed it last time. Showing it again. I love these shorts. Your boys got massive thighs from years of soccer and hockey. They fit my thighs perfectly. I didn't think I like shorts that had like leg holes that kind of like were too tight because generally that means it's tight in other regions not the case here in into the am they fit <laughs> super well and i use it yeah all the time yeah and so we've talked about this they do all kinds of men's apparel guys so they do the graphic tees which are probably the most obvious if you go to their website at into the am.com of course slash lfn uh but they also have the bombers they have button-ups they have Henleys. They have unbranded tees. They have branded tees with a little into the AM logo. They have athletic shorts. They they actually just released a, a new like um, pant, like men's pants, like more um, like Chino style uh, men's pants. Uh, so they have basically everything, beanies, everything you could possibly want. And guys, starting tomorrow... If you're watching this live, or I guess today, if you're probably watching the recorded version of this show, March 28th through April 3rd, they are doing their site-wide sale, which will give you 25 to 80% off on the items on the site. And on top of that, if you go to intotheam.com slash LFN, you get another 10% off and those discounts stack. So when they have a sale, you get an additional 10% off by using our code LFN and going to the link below. So what I'm saying is you guys can get a lot of very high quality swag for their site-wide sale, March 28th through April 3rd. So that would be the time in which I would go to that site and get very deep discounts. Also, they ship worldwide and they also shipped free to many places in Europe and internationally. Obviously ship free to the US with certain size orders, but I think they ship free to Australia with certain size orders, a bunch of places in Europe. Um, so check it out. Their shipping conditions are very good. Um, I've been able to get it shipped here to Korea, no problem, via DHL. Um, to arrive very reliably. So if you want to support us, guys, head on over to into the am.com slash LFN. Dom, when you wear sweats, are you like a loose sweats guy or are you a joggers guy? Um, I'm more of like a joggers guy. 
Yeah. Perfect. Because yep. they got that too. So head on over to, <laughs> yep. to the AM right now. <laughs> I actually Anytime. got some of their joggers last time. It's great. They're great. Yep. A- Anytime you have the opportunity to get a code that stacks on top of already sailed codes or already sales and clearance codes, I love that. It makes me super excited. So uh, thanks to our friends over at Into the AM for uh, being a partner. And we've heard you. Uh, I guess I've heard you guys the most from into the am like even in chat right now polo shirts are amazing low-key their best sponsor uh and pod champ i love saving money well you can do that with our code right now especially <laughs> during the sale this weekend <laughs> yeah and they do they do sales from time to time guys so we've been trying to work with them uh to make these announcements on the shows when their sales are coming up um so yeah just go ahead stack the discounts that they're already offering and then use the elephant code for an additional 10 percent off so it's it's pretty great it's pretty great and uh i know at least we we now have in our elephant discord a uh sponsor feedback category like channel and it, you can look in there too and people you can ask questions people have been loving into the am so we got a lot of positive feedback people have been getting the clothes really enjoying them so if you want testimonials or to ask other people questions, you can go to the Elephant Discord and do that. I was trying to remember. I was like feeling it on my skin. I was like, I'm trying to remember. I was like, when when was the last time I wore this blazer? And I was like, well, when was my last date? Well, I went to the beach. I was I <laughs> with the date. Yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. Bomber. Okay. With the bomber, right? <laughs> the beach bomber, right? And I was All like, right. Well, if it's windy, it's probably good. Yeah. The, the 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 guy was like, hey, are there things that you, you want to check off your checklist of LA things to do? And I was like, go to Magic Castle. So we went to Magic Castle, right? That was that was that was the date. That was one of the dates. That one you have to dress up though. Uh it was go hike the Hollywood sign. And then lastly, it was uh what it, the word I used. What does this mean to you guys? I said canoodle on the beach. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> and so that was a lot. when I say canoodle, what does that mean? I think just like kind of like like you're just on the beach with the blanket, like snuggling up. I think that kissing is implied in canoodling. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> Tom, what do you think? Uh yeah, I think like cuddle, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like it's like cuddle, but with a little kissing. Not not like full on making out. Just but you know, hold just... on, let me ask. Let me ask. Let me ask for a female um Yeah, can you can you can you weigh in here? All right, what like, is canoodling? It's definitely not sex. I think it's I, oh, I think it's she, just... she said she said wait, what did you say? She she thought it was sex. So <laughs> No, it's not it's not sex. It's, it's definitely not, it's not sex. sex. Like I just, I just, look, I just, yeah, it's like kissing and cuddling. I just looked it up. It, the definition is in, it says kiss and cuddle amorously. Amorously? Amorously. Well, yep, amorously. Um, all right. Strongly moved by love and especially sexual love. Thank you, Merriam Webster. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Strongly moved by love. Wait, did, did you say but often? <laughs> no, strongly moved by love and especially sexual love. And especially love. sexual love. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Loved it. Uh, <laughs> That's hey. Merriam Webster. It's not Urban Dictionary. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just wondering. It's a real why word. I had- I, I was just wondering why I had sand in my jacket and maybe if it was because I set up the uh, set up the situation incorrectly. And it seems like maybe I did. Um, but thanks to the a- into the AM for being there for me, uh, keeping me warm in the morning because beach on the beach. Beach is cold in the morning. <laughs> approved for canoodling, apparently. <laughs> yes, it's canoodling approved. There we go. All right. That testimony is over. Let us know in the comments below whether you think co- <laughs> what canoodling means. Don't look it up. If you did look it up, you've already heard this part. I should have called to action beforehand. But before we did this whole thing, what do you think canoodling meant? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, I, w- I will read out some of the answers next week for sure. Uh, because one team in the LCS is going to need some canoodling because they're not going to make it to MSI and their feelings are going to be hurt. 
and obviously canoodling. Yeah, they don't need canoodling because they're getting fucked. They're just skipping. <laughs> they're just skipping the canoodling. <laughs> That's actually maybe <laughs> the name of this week's segment is going to be canoodle or kick. Who we keeping? Uh, because we've had a couple of underperformers with one of the teams in the LCS. And yes, we're talking about canoodle nine. Uh, are we going with fudge? Or are we going with Vulcan? Both these players not playing to their peak and have been um, exploited in various different ways throughout the split. So which one are you keeping? It's this week's keeper kick fudge or Vulcan. Sorry. My mind is trying to, it's, 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 right. who would you rather canoodle these with? Guys. Who would you, who would you rather <laughs> canoodle with? You know, Fudge is bigger but nicer. Yeah, Vulcan Fudge, way more Fudge direct. Could demanding. Hold me in his strong arms. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Fudge could just pick me. He could just pick me up and carry me down the beach. Jesus. Both these guys are okay. So, like from a personal perspective, like this is where I think from um, a personal prof- professional perspective, these are two of my like, like buds like i would say that fudge and vulcan are friends vulcan through esports uh soccer uh fudge through max through ls and just has always been great in interviews and we've talked about a lot of stuff so this feels bad to me from a pers- personal perspective but that's not what we get paid for we get paid to make the hard decisions otherwise you end up like uh cometo and casey and holding on to Sagan. so keep or kick both haven't played well what are you looking at in terms of making this type of decision? And then which way are you leaning here, Dom? It depends on what my options are. Like, because the thing is C9 has a import slot, right? So they that do, means... and they can replace either of them with an import. Exactly. So if they're willing to import and they have like unlimited options, I think that the, the biggest difference you could get would be top lane. I think that if you replaced Fudge, with a really talented individual player, it would give you like a higher upside, more ceiling. Now, if we had to replace them with like domestic players, like it was like, oh, like one of them needs to be replaced and we have to bring in like Academy player or something like that, then I would probably- uh, Licorice. Yes, Licorice is who was on We We could well. go Licorice. We could go Licorice. I think the problem right now is that there's not that many like stable players. And even though Fudge will not like win you the series, most of the time he won't lose you the series. So- Having a, a top laner that's stable is generally pretty good in North America because there aren't that many stable top laners. Like if you look at what are you gonna say, Monty? Also, all the supports suck in NA. Yeah, so like exactly. the NA domestic supports. <laughs> yeah, which is the second part that I was gonna say, which is like <laughs> the difference between like Vulcan and other supports that are like maybe slightly better than him is not that much compared to like the best top laners in the region. Like I think Wibbo is significantly better than Fudge at this point. Um yeah, I mean, I would much rather have Impact than, than Fudge. I mean, Impact is like if Fudge had bigger balls. That's what Impact is like. Like, if <laughs> if Fudge was willing to, like, actually try to win the series as a, as, a, as opposed to just not losing. The thing that really triggers me about Fudge is, like, he it just feels like he doesn't have to do anything to win a lot of the time on Cloud9. So he's played his whole career with, like, the mindset of, like, other people will carry as long as I don't run it down. That's such a crazy way to be winning so many titles. Like how many times? Wait, I guess he. How many titles does he have? Does he just have three titles now. Three. Yeah, he has three titles by just like not running it. I'd say the best title he ever had was that one where he was playing like Jackson Fiora and stuff. Um, I think it was twenty twenty two summer. That was probably like the one where I'm like, okay, he's actually like playing and he's trying to like win. But besides for that, it just feels like he's just playing not to lose, and that's good enough for his team. Um, and I really wish that he was forced to play better because i think he's capable of more it's just with the teams he's been on he like has some of the best carries pretty much every time that he's playing in lcs he has two of the best carries in the region um and because of that he gets away with murder like he gets away with just like even farming like not taking trades when he should be taking trades like he just wants to make the game as like there's players that want to add volatility to the game to potentially get further ahead it feels like fudge wants like the least volatile game of all time and he just wants to like exist and get to team fights and not do anything super int and then win like that. Like he wants to make less mistakes than the other top laner as opposed to make the other top laner make more mistakes than him. Monty. 
I, I think the issue, like, you're going to be also, I think, affected by the match that Cloud9 just played against FlyQuest. But I also want to point out the, f- the fact that Cloud9 just doesn't seem to have any cohesive shot calling in game right now, which might actually be one of the bigger problems. Like, I had to watch, you know, the first two games of this series that they played against FlyQuest. And in the first game, despite the fact that there's a Hue and a Senna, and we have Vi and Gragas on Cloud9, so they're playing into the Hue and Senna, we make absolutely zero attempts to flank or deal with the black back line, and we're like trying to dump all our cooldowns and violed a tank build Renekton Whippo in the front line instead. And so it's like they don't even know how to create winnable situations with their team comps. And in the second game, people were memeing on JoJo, I saw, because he's, like, engaging with Yone ult. But the reason he was doing that is because Fudge, who was playing uh, Rumble, and Blabber, who was playing Sejuani, refused to ult to start fights. Like, they went to a front-to-back team fighting composition, and they just stood there until JoJo got frustrated because they're just staring at each other in mid lane, and nobody presses R on Rumble or Sejuani, so he just kind of has to go in. Um, you know, it, it just seems to me that there's nobody who's actually trying to pull the trigger on this roster, which is why... Typically, shot calling comes out of, you know, support or jungle roles. So, you know, depending on how we don't know how comms are going, but depending on how comms are going, you might have to replace Vulcan just to get somebody who will, like, hit the go button. Because this team has no idea how to what their win conditions are. They don't know how to team fight. They are, they are fucking terrible at team fighting. Like, they don't know what everybody's job is in a team fight. And so it just appears random. It just appears random. Which is weird because it's incredibly uh, weird it, it, Vulcan's normally been the engaged guy he's been the engaged guy uh and um you know chatting with LS a little bit LS has said well Vulcan's never been able to play enchanters that's always been his thing so now if he's the engaged guy and they're not finding the right fights like that's literally his strength in his job so I mean, Vulcan kind of was like playing Nautilus in, in this game, and he wasn't engaging either. Yep. I was going to say they Vulcan was more of the culprit, like, that, because, like, it feels like, like, the Nautilus is the for sure engaged. Like, the Nautilus is the one that can, like, just flash ult. The fight has started. They're guaranteed knocked yep. up. Then, like, you know, rumble ult layers on top of that. But, and you but, start but fighting. But imagine having Sejuani rumble Nautilus on your team comp and having nobody willing to start. The, like, they're literally staring at, fly, at FlyQuest in the mid lane. And then, like, JoJo's like, well, fuck it, guys. Somebody's got to start this thing. He just goes in. And it's not a good play by JoJo, but at the same time, th- I, the fear on this roster of actually, like, doing something in a game is crazy. Like, how do we end up with a game with that, with this composition with the Yone in mid where we get two kills? Yeah. Like, they, they should be getting kills with this. Co- like, you have you have non-committal engage. Here's the thing about League of Legends, guys. The, the the holy grail is non-committal engage. And by that, I mean, I can just throw out a Sejuani ult and I don't have to go in. Like, if you go fishing with enough Sejuani and not and rumble ults, you're going to find something for, for Yone to follow up on, right? You have Senna heals. You have Senna ult. Are you fucking kidding me? You can't get more than two kills with this comp? This is easy. This is an easy comp to operate. It was pathetic. It was a fucking pathetic game. Yeah, it was a tough game. I mean, I think that they also were just like shell shock from the first game because normally because I think I think game one like was actually a really high quality game like C9 played well, but FlyQuest actually played better, which almost never happens in NA. It's normally like one team like if Cloud9 plays a good game in NA, they almost always win. That's how it always that's how it felt the entire split where when Cloud9 lost, it was like, what the fuck are you doing? What is this team comp that you drafted? Why did you pair these champions together? It, it was a whole issue that you had that was separate to like the actual like gameplay. And like they were just simply playing bad. But when they play well and they lose, it's like, what the fuck? Wait, is Spike was actually better than us? Like it, it seemed shocking <laughs> to C9. And then in the second game, um, it felt like they were they were looking for the perfect fight too often instead of just any fight. The whole idea of comps like this, when you have the non Camille engage, is that you engage on them. You force them to use flashes, you create an imbalance in the game, and then you fucking murder them afterwards. It's it's like the first fight is, is not very easy, right? You throw out a Sejuani, okay, this guy cleanses, whatever. 
Then you throw out Rumble. Okay, this guy flashes, throw, throw the Nautilus Assault in. People use their stuff to get away. All right, in that moment, you might actually lose that fight. So you don't actually have to pursue that fight to the ends of the earth. What really good teams do with these types of comps is they go mid and they try to force action on timers where nothing is up. So they don't actually need to fight over anything when their engage is down. So they'll try to force on like three minutes before Drake. They'll just randomly push side lanes, find a time to collapse mid, engage mid, throw all their shit. And sometimes it looks really ugly. And I, I notice a lot in my Twitch chat, like people like miss ults like that. They'll be like, Ew, so like they'll like freak out. But the whole idea is that you just throw your shit out. You make them react to it. And then the next time that you have your ults up, they don't have possibility to counterplay your play. And it feels like C9 was fighting in five minute increments with a comp that can fight every two minutes. That's the problem. When that, who needs to track that? Like who is that? Like right after draft, I mean, this, it's like is, tell you. Just, tell I mean, you need to be trained. Front. Like you need, you, need to, you need to be trained in that mindset of like we just need to be fighting. Like we fight more. We fight more with this comp. Like we can fight more often than they can fight. So we just make shit happen with more fights. You push the side lanes. I, you group mid. You throw your fucking ults. That's it. I mean, I I just saw this composition drafted from C9, and I thought to myself, Degon, oh, this is quite easy to execute. You know, I thought their comp was harder to execute in game number one. I was like, all right, so you lose that one. We'll go back to basics. How is it that this super team has no voice that can say the most basic shit about how to play these compositions? Like this is, it's not hard. Because, because it's the mindset is like, they're trying to, they, they don't want to take a fight that's not directly winning. So when they look at something, they're like, I mean, we could go on this, but it's not like clear that we're going to win it. So I guess we shouldn't go where the idea should be. We need to fight just to make the next fight good. It's like they're, they're playing with no foresight. They're just playing every situation as if like that fight is going to win or lose the game. And what you need with comps like this is you need more mobility in the game. The whole idea is that you have people moving around like Rumble is a champion that wins his lane every time versus anyone. Right. So the idea is you establish control in your lane and then you move around like even in the mid game you don't want to sit into a side lane and just farm perma for somebody who like scales evenly to you you want to go into the lane push the lane out and insta move and then just drop your rumble ult. and like you don't even need like a rumble ult that's like perfectly cooking the whole team you just put a rumble ult in a way that makes the enemy fucking flash it right you put the the rumble ult across the entire lane and the center is like or whatever the fuck you're playing against is like how do i get over this shit i guess i have to flash and then the next fight, you put it on top of their face, and then they can't flash, and it's over. I guess the part that I'm thinking about now, and I know that that is uh, from a mechanical standpoint, from a strategic standpoint, how that's how you're supposed to play out the comps, and they did not do that. The why is interesting to me, because when I look at these players and their mentalities, like, JoJo... I keep thinking, like, who would be shell shocked on this roster, right? We got to see some of that from Vulcan I mean, JoJo's on Flyquest. Laning JoJo's laning phases were quite good, insane. You know, especially especially into Karma that Yone game, he did really well. Yep. Like JoJo's always been that guy, and he's still that guy, and that's why he got the votes and is the thing that's chugging Cloud Nine to third place, at least third place yet again. Blabber, the two time MVP, he's been a rock throughout his career. I think the question mark is Berserker, who's had the biggest variance from the deviation from his uh, normal dominant self. And then Fudge, right? Like Fudge has always been someone who thinks about the game a lot, who I, I think you had it right there, Dom, tries to not take bad trades. And I think that's partially from having been so aggressive in the past, at Worlds, and then kind of failing and breaking the game open for their opponents years ago. Actually, year after year, uh, to be honest. So I, mean, I felt like he just couldn't mechanically keep up with like people internationally. Like It, it wasn't yeah. even about like him playing too aggressive. It's just like he was getting his ass beat a lot of the time. Like he, Maybe he would pick aggressively, but what would happen in the game is he would be like, whoever it was, one of the Asian players would rock up and just make Fudge's bitch for like 20 minutes in the lane. And that was just, it just was what it was, you know? The new Dyrus experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So 
I, I kind of just wonder like why they can't put it together and which player, which player needs to be the one that's like, okay, you are listening to me in game. Normally I'd imagine well, I, before Jojo being in this roster would be blabber. I thought it would just be blabber. To well, do that it was probably Sven. Dictates everything. Mm. It was probably Sven if we're being honest, because yeah. Sven is extremely vocal in game. And I, as somebody who has, actually seen c9 scrims when sven was in this roster he was talking a lot um he was definitely one of the main voices on this team and i don't know if vulcan has replaced that role because even though i think vulcan is individually a better support player than sven um the the chemistry that may have been lost in terms of shot calling and and like trying to push the go button may not be there without Sven in this roster. I mean, I and, just and you also have to remember t- teams in North America like pushing the go button when the go button is winning a fight. They yeah. don't like fighting for things that are not just fight wins. Like when the fight's like a little scary and they have potential to lose, people just don't like engaging. So I think this is something that C9's actually never been good at, which is why we normally don't see these types of comps do well. Like normally when it comes time to like win LCS, it's like, Play comfort, like play some Maokai, play some shit that Gale. just like outscales, Jinx. and then just win. Yeah. yeah, that's always been how it is in NA. That's what's comfort. Inspired actually said something that was really smart about this and why everyone is so overly passive in NA. This actually resonated me, uh, re- resonated with me, just ex- extre- like very strongly because of the fact that I just did a, a recent a recent challenger grind in North America. And what it is, is like in North American solo queue, you actually can't rely on anyone. Like the quality is so bad that you need to be the carry no matter what role you play. Like if you're a jungler, you have to be the carry in order to get challenger in an efficient amount of games. Like if you want to optimize your climb, you better be carrying the games. If you die once, the game is probably fucking lost. So it breeds like a culture of everyone trying to like be the carry and like not make mistakes where like in competitive play, you have people whose job is to just like start things. Like I always had this term that I would use, which would be like positive inters, like people that would go in, make some shit happen. (laughs) You You int, but it makes a good situation for your team. Like you make enough space or you create a good enough situation that your team is able to follow up and they're able to thrive in, in that situation that you've created. And a lot of players in na like if you do this in solo queue and you're a positive and you make like a really good play but you die and it's like all right guys finish it out your team's never gonna fucking pull through so because of that you have everyone trying to be really resource heavy play the care like no one wants to drop waves no one ever in na wants to drop a wave of experience or like skip camps to do something risky in like and if it doesn't work you end up losing a lot of gold to potentially win the entire game. No one wants to make those fucking plays. So what you end up with is like super structured fights with everyone having summoners up all the time around objectives. And if you are playing under those conditions, the champions that are going to thrive are going to be the champions that are just straight up stronger with everything up like Orianna or in these types of champs. Uh, I, I, I like that structure of, I like how you've structured that because I think even as like a pundit who's watched a lot and has a platform to talk about it, we wouldn't, if, if someone dropped camp or if someone dropped a wave to go make that play and fail, we wouldn't say, wow, they made that decision to do that. We would say, what an idiot. There's a whole camp on the bottom side of the map that they're missing out on or a whole wave on Depends the on other side failed. of the map that they're losing out on. Generally, yes. But and the timing of it. like, But I think... Just, I, but but I think that's you. Like, you are, like, one of the s- smartest minds in League of Legends, and you're like, well, it depends. I think if we're dumber minds, we're like, wow, what an idiot. He failed Flame, right? Yeah. I think that is what fans would do. That is probably is what I would do. This is about the LPL feeling. right here. This is why yeah. people think the LPL is terrible. Right here is what yeah. you're explaining. It's like LPL mm-hmm. players will make plays on timers that are good and not really care about the, like, mechanics of the play that much. Like, that's not that important. Like, What's drilled into you is that you're taking a, a fight on your timer. You're taking a, a, a fight on a good time for you and a bad time for the enemy. And people will see like LPL teams that are extremely high activity, have lower levels of precision than LCK teams. And they'll be like, how could, how could this LC, like how could Genji ever lose 
to an LPL team, like in your mind, because it's like Gen G just plays all the situations better, right? Like they're just more precise. They're just like in those fights, they will generally play fights better. But it, right. what an LPL team will do is they'll t they'll bring you into the mud. They'll take a fight, a fight, a fight, a fight, and then like if you're not ready for all those fights. There's going to be fights that you're not prepared or you don't have TP and you're going to eventually lose one of them and then they're going to fucking break your entire neck. They're going to just, they're going to take your entire base. And that's why I like the LPL is because they have always been an activity based region. They want to create more fights on good timers for them. And even the mindset, like I've talked to LPL coaches and even the mindset of like LPL teams is like, they're not afraid to push side waves when it's like three minutes before Drake, because if you kill the guy and you send three people up there, Nothing bad happens because of it. As long as he doesn't have like a 1k gold shutdown, you can just go in for the wave. And if you go and you send three people to kill him, okay, cool. You'll take something on the other side of the map. You'll get like jungle camps for it. You'll be able to push like other lanes, get a turret somewhere else. Like you can make other stuff happen during that timer. So you don't even need to like set up vision to allow the guy to split push. You just have him split push. And if you go kill him, then you have so much tempo everywhere else on the map that you end up with a gold lead or an experience lead generated off that death. But this is just not how like Western teams play League of Legends. Right. And I think that it's it's objectively wrong to play League of Legends the way Western teams play League of Legends. And, I think you would like was... you have to be so precise. You have to be so insanely good at fighting to like win every single fight, or you'll just lose because the other team is just taking too much. They're just playing the map like they're they're just they're playing a fucking spread offense. And and that was my point with the like, I guess it wasn't even just media. Like someone in the chat was like, why, why would they care what other people think? It's less about that. It's more about that is how people think that is how maybe some of the coaches think that is how the players think. And that's something you have to like undo. It is something you have to un well unlearn it. And that's the word. It's also hard with cloud nine because they don't have much of a coaching staff anymore. It's like mythy against the world at this point in time, they have like Vagar V2, but he's remote. And it's like mythy in the room. And that's it. So I think it's hard to make these changes in player perception. And especially, by the way, guys, it's even harder when you have like a super team because the players are all very set in their ways and they're resistant to this kind of coaching. This is like the, the opposite. The way that 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 people that the, the league of legends is moving and even if you look at like the thing that about t1 is like i flame t1 all the time stylistically they're the close they're the most willling to do this out of like any single yes. um they're the most LPL, lpl like lck team and i think that's why they've had so like that's why they were able to win worlds i feel like that's why they've been one of the most successful lck team over the years is because they understand the idea of fighting not for no reason. That's what everyone always says. They always say they're fighting for no reason. It's like, no, bro, they're fighting to make the next fight better. Like the fight that matters is not the fight two minutes before Baron spawns and two minutes before third Drake. The fight that matters is the one where Baron's up and third Drake is up. So you want that second, that third Drake and Baron fight, that second fight to be in the most optimal conditions for your team. I want to be good enough as a caster and host to be able to identify that's the point of this skirmish. That's the point of this fight. Um, so. Easiest way to do it is you watch more LPL. <laughs> like that's the easiest way. <laughs> and also, you got it's like, did they use a five minute flash um, cooldown, but they traded it for a sixty second ult timer? And yeah. when is the dragon spawning? Is it spawning in two minutes? Guess no, who there's won like, that? There's so many levels to it. When you start seeing like how players play, there's like so many levels to it. Then like there's times where people are like abusing windows where they're they're trying to bait a 60 second ult but they flash it and they know that the ult is going to be more useful in the third drake fight than the flash that was blown so they'll actually do it the other way where it's like now if you ult too close to the objective timer i'll put myself in a position where you can ult me but then you have no ult for the fight and in the immediate even though the the flash obviously has a longer cooldown in the immediate the flash is actually less valuable than the old. Like I, I've, that's like the reason why I like league of legends is just seeing like how the players are actually thinking about stuff like this. But yeah. I swear like most viewers don't even consider this. So it's just like, he missed the ulti. <laughs> Keg W he missed the ulti. Like that's like what fucking most viewers are, are, are like have going on in their brains. Yeah. Uh, damn. This was a keeper kick about fudge Vulcan. And instead we went on a deep run uh, about just, 
comps in general about uh, well i, I think it's, i think it's important because it really is about the kind of leadership that cloud nine has and so i think one of the strongest arguments to replace vulcan is if you think you could get potentially a uh, a more vocal in-game leader right or a team captain kind of presence in the support role that said you keep him and you kick fudge yep yeah licorice is available uh i'm trying to think licorice you could buy summit away from movie star he's playing in lla bring summit back to uh, back to cloud nine i think M- I, I, mvp summit <laughs> yeah mvp summit the the other person i'm thinking of for for vulcan would be chime chime is a bit like playing in the uh academy system right now uh he was a player that i was pretty high on uh yeah but you can get it, an right? import that's the thing is like or an import, yeah. you know the import conversation opens up like so many options for cloud nine so Great point, chat. Uh, Dom, how could you have missed possibly bringing Hoon back in the top lane for True. Fudge? Right, we yeah, I mean, Hoon is busy beating Armut's ass in TCL. <laughs> Three owing Armut in TCL. He's got bigger fish to fry. He's already conquered North America. Now he's conquering Turkey. Remember when Armut was in NA? That was crazy. What a I mean, chapter. Yep. He was pretty chapter. bad. Um. All right. That was Keeper Kick. This has been a chunky episode so far. Let's keep going with our final uh, segment of the day. It's time to go to the cream of the crop. It is playoff time. That means a pressure cooker. That is the LPL gauntlet, the best playoff system in the world. And LCK playoffs has kicked on off. And Monty, Guangdong Freaks made it. They snuck they on did in. It. They, they did had it. to get I in was there. Right. Yeah. You was right. Fraudulent. You were wrong, Dom. You were wrong. We all got off the train. They 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 left. They let you have false hope, Dom, and then they did what I said they were going to do, which is win in their final week. They didn't beat both teams. They beat one. (laughs) That's true. No, they are still super fraudulent. They look like shit. But uh, fortunately, for Guangdong freaks, you know. Some teams also look like shit, like D plus <laughs> so. and Mad Lions. Just kidding. <laughs> they a little bit better this week. All right, how they will do, and the uh, all the teams in playoffs is the talking point of this week's Galaxy Brain Club. Let's get to it. Uh, yeah, uh, LCK kind of went the way that we expected. Not a hundred percent. I mean, you had Hanwha Life beating KT like that. Generally, that was the way that, that you thought. The exciting yeah. ones were basically Fear X up against Nongshim getting uh, kaboomed from behind. And uh, uh, I guess Kwangdong Freaks surprising Damwon Kia after, golly, man, DK just had such massive leads and just threw the shit out of him. Uh, that's frustrating. Showmaker played some very embarrassing tristana games yep i mean dumb one has got to be like out of the teams that have potential worldwide i feel like dumb one has got to be the worst macro team like the way that they lose leads (laughs) is just inconceivable like it's it's like they don't even know they're spawning yeah they're the new breon they're the new breon it's amazing um yeah they are trash uh they will get bopped by kt in playoffs you think so look i think (laughs) i'm not sure I mean, it doesn't really matter, honestly, because whoever wins out of that is going to play Gen G. So uh, I figured we do a little bit of previewing for you guys who are only tuning into Asian regions to the playoffs because you like to spend all of your time for whatever reason watching some really shit games in North America and Europe instead of just sticking with the good stuff the whole time. I don't know why you're like this. Why are you like this? Seek therapy. <laughs> um, but so if you haven't been watching LCK and LPL, uh, what what you need to know is that spring playoffs are coming up starting this week in both regions. And for LCK, what this means is that Hanwha, which is the third seed, is, is facing the sixth seed, Kwangdung Freaks. Kwangdung will get destroyed. KT and DK play each other. Now, the last time KT and D-plus played each other, it was week six, and D-plus won. But KT looked, in my series. opinion, 
It was a horrible series, but KT, in my opinion, looked like the better team, but D plus won game one and game three, which were both over 50 minutes long, and KT won a game two relatively cleanly. This will be on 14.6, so we will not have smolder shenanigans anymore, so nobody will be smoldering anybody and cheesing their way to a win. I think KT will probably win this one. Now, Gen G and T1 are waiting in the next round. Gen G gets to select their next opponent. Hanwha will win. Therefore, they will not pick Hanwha. Hanwha versus T1 is the exciting matchup. That will be the rematch of the one that Hanwha just won uh, versus T1. So, possibility that T1 gets knocked. Well, you never the know who the LCK teams are going to pick. That's what we learned last split. <laughs> well, no, that that that's that that's like rewriting history. Faker was coming off an injury and could play like two champions. And then KT decided not to ban those two champions. Okay. That was on KT. Um, they I mean, were I just like think it was, in. it was definitely an ill decision. Like when you look at what the other option was, <laughs> like, I think that it didn't make I, sense. I, I think, I think that they both made the wrong decision and then strategized very poorly around it. Anyway, Genji is not going to pick Hanwha. They're not going to pick Hanwha. Um, Unless, like, Trovi decides that he needs revenge on, like, Peanut and Doran and Delight, I guess. Um, that would be cool. <laughs> I mean, if they're going to pick them and then he, like, makes a public statement saying, like, I got to smash these shitters who ruined my chances at Worlds. I'm all here. I'm here for it, okay? Make um, the interview happen, Ashley K. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then KT versus DK. The, the winner of that one, whoever it is, I pray to God we have a better series than the fucking horrible series they played last time in week six. Um, we'll probably face Gen G. Um, that probably won't be very compelling League of Legends either, even though D plus did kind of play Gen G close the last time they met up. Um, I think KT will win. And then it feels like we're we're probably heading towards another Gen G T1 final eventually, unless Hanwha can continue the energy that they have. Hanwha at least has looked better in the last few weeks. Like Zeka can now play Talia, I guess, which is new and fun for him. Um mm -hmm. he was kind of bad at Talia before, but he's had a he's had a couple good games now. Talia is so broken now. I mean Talia is just is. like they they made Talia the most brain dead mid laner. If you watch out Talia lanes one through five, it'll actually like hurt your brain. Like you actually just spam Q on the wave and E the wave every single time. Like there's no situation where you do not try to just push the wave perma the entire fucking game. It's so crazy. It's so crazy that you have enough mana that you can do that. But I guess that's Talia. So well, uh, that's your that's your LCK playoffs in a nutshell. Genji are the favorites. Hanwha might be a somewhat of a dark horse. It's probably Genji and T1 in the finals again. Probably Genji winning. Uh, don't get too excited. Viper got Viper got robbed of first team all pro because Korean people can't vote, and they Actually, decided yes. that Pays was good. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think Pays is like good, but I mean, how is Viper not sure. clearly the best AD carry in your I, region? I can't. I can't. I will go. I on hate. An epic I hate rant. the way that they it do makes, all pro in Korea. It makes it's me so, so disgusting. angry, Dom, especially because Pays was like actively bad in lane at the start of this split, like he spent half the split being very bad in the laning phase. And he is the worst player on his team. So he's still good, but he is the worst player on Genji. Yeah, but his team got first. They won two more series than Hanwha Life won. Oh, God. I mean, this is just what Korea does every single time. I feel like Korea, they just don't care about like individuals at all. It's just like all just like who what is what is the best team? Like that, that's well, what that's all they see, do over you there. See Dom, the, you see Dom. Since it's a team game, the best players are the ones who play together the best as a team. Ergo, the best team has all the best players. Then why is carry on all pro first team? <laughs> because do you want the actual do you want the actual reason? Yeah. Give me the actual reason. Because it was almost tied and Atlas voted for Barrel in his top three instead of Lehens, which meant that Lehens didn't get it. Which Wait, is fucking that, hilarious. Why does Atlas like <laughs> Barrel so much? No, Barrel won some fan. games. Barrel won them. Yeah, Bar some Barrel games. actually did. I mean, Barrel actually did. Was carry doing some, some crazy shit. Like, I mean, he also he lost them. them some games too. Like, yes, he's he an extremely <laughs> volatile player. Sure. Uh, look, that's not the point. The point is, is that it, it was like a one vote difference, and Barrel ruined it. As as is his want. <laughs>
I'm trying to look what? it up right Enzo. now. Yeah, like the the craziness that are the fandoms of the players has been intense. I like her. I poked out to some of the casters, and they're like, "Yeah, we get a lot of heat from the fans, and maybe it's not worth it." And they're like, "All the Korean media know that Lehens is the one that's driving the team. How could you not vote for him? You guys just keep being T1 fanboys. It it's." It's hard out there, and it does seem like... No, it's not. Here's what you do. Everyone's lockstep against them. You just fucking <laughs> turn off... You just turn yes. off your fucking monitor, D-God. It's not that fucking hard. Yeah. No, I mean, like... I mean, personally, if you, I was you, to you, receive you... massive backlash for something that I said online, I probably would avoid <laughs> doing it. Because I am just a shriveled up pussy, I guess. <laughs> like, D-God, you can... Your computer has a power button... You know, you could turn off your phone and just like read a book or watch some TV instead. Watch a good movie, you know. You, it's actually relatively easy to avoid this. I guess I'm just bummed that despite despite the English broadcast team having the most unique votes and and different votes again, right? Barrel getting a vote. There it it feels like no player outside of the top three will ever get voted to the top team, right? Uh, to, to all pro because it depends if it, there's ever like any parody in the league, but I feel like, right. Like L LCK, the reason why I don't watch much LCK on stream is like, you see the matches and it's like, there's like two matches a week that I actually want to watch out of like the 10 matches yeah. that are being played. There's like two or three that are interesting to me depending on the week. And outside of that, it's just like T one stomping DRX. And I guess like, it's nice if you're like, stream it's is based on sometimes. farming like t1 fans then you can do that like because those those do get like the most viewership but, like i actually couldn't be paid to watch t1 play against like dong shin there was a joke there i missed it couldn't be paced never mind all right yeah it has been very procedural this year in uh the lck and was last year as well and it doesn't feel like Monty there's and it was the year before and the year before that. And that's kind of how yeah. LCK generally is like the yeah. bottom teams in LCK are normally just fodder. Well, how we'll, see. we'll see how it plays out in this playoffs. Monty has laid it out on for you. Let's move on over to the uh, LPL where it's the gauntlet. You know it. You love it. Some teams start in round one. Some teams start in round three. All of them still could get knocked out in single limb. I think it is the fourth round, right, Dom? The fourth round where double limb starts. It's off. yep. It's the it's the best format. It's top four that are double limb. It's the best. It's the best yep. playoff format in League of Legends. It's great. It's always fun. Uh, yep. I was asked by chat to explain why. Why is it great, Monty? Why is it great, Dom? Because it makes regular season really matter in terms of seeding and only the top two teams get a buy into the double elimination portion. So even the third and fourth place teams have to win a best of five. In this case, that's JDG and FPX uh, before they can get into double elim. So there's very, very, very real rewards for placing top two. So it wait, you know, if you if you're going to play a long fucking regular season, at least make it matter. You know what I mean? Don't just thrust all teams into a double limb bracket if, if they place like, and also, you know, there's too many teams in playoffs in the West. And like, it makes epic storylines because if you are able from round one to win three consecutive best of fives to make top four, that's like really pretty epic, right? And so even if you are not, even if you hit like a late burst and you are able to string together some wins late in the season to like squeak into playoffs, you still have a shot at going the distance. And I think that that's just a very exciting storyline for a lot of dark horses. But if the teams are dog shit, they play like one best of five and just get out and you never have to watch them play like shit again. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's just so many stakes on like the first three rounds because it's literally just single elimination for the first three rounds. Um, and yeah, when you watch teams run the gauntlet, the storylines are crazy. I mean, people forget this about BLG people have in their head that like BLG and JDG were always the best teams in LPL last year, but that's actually not what the case was at all. Like in spring BLG was like a 10 and 16. People didn't think this team was like very good at all. People thought they would get eliminated in the second round. And they went from round two all the way to the finals of LPL 
went to MSI, everyone doubted them again, said they were the weakest team, at, the weakest Asian team. Then they got to it at uh, second place um, at MSI as well. So like you get to see crazy storylines like that. The OMG run was so hype last year because starting in the second round, I mean, you get some serious teams in the second round, like second round, most likely is going to be LNG versus Weibo. Like this is this is the second round matchup. Like you're getting you're getting like Light versus Gala. You're getting fucking Scout versus Xiao Hu. That is second round play. And then from there, the winner is playing against JDG. Boom. Winner of that plays against top esports. Like you just have like every match is fucking hype. I personally like watching the round one teams. I think this year the round one is actually going to be more exciting. At least on yeah, the top it's side. Interesting. I think like OMG WE, I think that's a pretty fucking close um, best of five. And even if you look at the the like bookies, they have it at like 1.8 odds for both teams. They're not uh, skewed either way. So like these matches just is, end is up. Is Angel back? Yes. By the way, yeah, he's already back. Okay, he was already he's back. back for the last series. Right, yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. So Angel is back. Um, the OMG team actually did uh, do better than expectations. A lot of teams, a lot of people thought that this would just be like one of the worst teams, myself included. I thought it would be one of the worst teams in LPL. Angels had a resurgence. He's actually been playing well. He's, I think, third in like player of the games, um, like uh, in MVPs behind Milky Way and uh, Kanavi. So he's had a, a really good season. Uh, Zhao Fang, their jungler who came from LDL, has been popping off. Viego is essentially a perma ban against this guy because he plays it so well every single time. So, I mean, there's just reasons to watch all these teams and you really just get like a, a clash of styles. Pretty much every single team has champions that are very specific to the way that they play the game. Um, and it just makes for like a, a really nice playoff experience. I don't know. You just get to watch a bunch of high stakes matches. Uh, the upper side of the bracket for our friends that are listening on in OMG versus World Elite. That winner then plays Ninjas in Pajamas. That winner then plays fpx and then that winner makes it to the double limb portion against number one seed blg on the bottom side of the bracket it's weibo versus ig that winner plays lng which then plays into jdg who finished third and to top esports who is your second seed into the double limb so uh as dom has highlighted just stunners uh, after round one, even in round one, it's the solid teams that if you you've been watching a ton of the LPL, you know how good they are. But then after that, you get into some of the more famous names that you're just used to hearing, used to seeing. It's always fun to see who makes it out alive of this first portion of the single limb bracket part, Monty. Yeah. And also you get to see, you know, mid table matchups. Like if you don't want to just see stomps, like it, it's fun. If you have a pet favorite team, that's lower in the bracket to maybe see them win a best of five or two before they hit the buzz saw that is the actual like elite teams. Right. Um, and you can get uh false hope, you know, as you cheer for them versus the bad teams. Uh, and then you get yourself all pumped up. And then by the time they hit the good teams, they just get destroyed. Um, but the false hope is there temporarily, right. While you're waiting for them to, to hit the top four. Um, it, it's fun. It's fun. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to this. The the LPL has had some, I think, pretty interesting teams in the mid table. Like WE is another one. I mean, Prince has been fucking terrible. He's uh, but Wayward is he's gone. Yeah, I know he's. I, I know he's been benched again. <laughs> Stays yeah. back. Uh, Wayward Wayward's been really good. Um, this this year, um, which he he kind of had a fall off there for a while after his rookie debut. Um, you know, IG's been a little bit more exciting since Leon came back into the lineup. Um. Yeah, it's fun. There's some fun teams here. They're on a five loss streak. IG is probably just going to get <laughs> clapped round one, but who knows? Maybe they, they do something. They beat, but they beat BLG, and that's what. Yep they ru <laughs> they ruined BLG's perfect season. Congratulations to them. Well played. Uh, dumb. So by the time that we do the next episode, uh, we will have seen, yeah, one, two, three, four rounds. Four, four yep. rounds. Uh. Give us your predictions for rounds one and two. All right, four matches, uh, rounds one and two. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think Weibo probably wins pretty easily against IG. Then LG beats Weibo. Um, and I'll take NIP beating, I guess. I mean, well, it really depends. It OMG versus WE is really, really fucking close. I think it just depends on, like, 
which team is able to like identify the real core parts that need to be banned out of the other team. Cause I think both of these teams are very like, they're limited, which is why they're mid table teams um, in what they can draft. And like which team is able to like bring extra champions to cover that, that, that do similar things to what they're good at so that they're, they're able to iterate on their style and play multiple different um, games out. Like, cause they are going to be going to five games or like four games, probably at least in this series. Um, so when I'm looking at that, what I mean by that is like, do we see like a Rek'Sai top being picked up by Cube, for example, because he's been probably one of the best Uder players in China, but now that stuff is getting banned against him. If Cassante and Uder are out, is he able to actually play things like the Rek'Sai that give the team the same identity, or is he going to be forced to play um, like any of the more skill intensive matchups where he'll probably just lose? That's what I'm looking for in that round. All right. Boom. This is a exciting time in League of Legends because yep. the pressure is being put on. And now as a fan, if you are a fan of a team, this is where you're like, all right, this is where my energy goes. Heartbreak happens or just unbridled joy if your team makes it on to the next round. Uh, and then finally, I guess we didn't really need to touch on it too much. Three games or three teams left, two games left in the LCS TL versus Cloud9 and winner of that I, up against FlyQuest. I I cannot accept that TL might make it to MSI. Yeah, I, I need C9 to win. <laughs> I just need them to win. That's it. I think I think yes. I think overall for the good of the region, Cloud9 going to get more international experience is great. What I've I mean, heard. can you imagine what Team Liquid will look like if they win on the smolder patch? Because they're playing on 14-5 and they've just been smoldering at North America. If they smolder North America and then go to MSI with a gutted smolder, can you imagine how garbage their performance is going to be, Degon? I I think I want Yun to be the guy. Like he showed up. Can he be the guy ago. without without uh you know picking smolder when NA teams do absolutely fucking nothing to stop him? <laughs> He'll figure that out once he gets there. Like that, <laughs> like you know, like I think those yeah, are the we've experiences. We've seen Yon at international performance. We've seen him. He, he threw the T one game that they were going to win at Worlds. Yep, yeah. it was a terrible throw too. He's he the just criminal. Up and lost. He's that the was, he is uh, the fucking criminal lane, who ruined. Kusana. He he is the fucking criminal who ruined Team Liquid's potential win over T one at the last Worlds. That's I what think... you're telling me. You want more? You're like. I love that. Get run it back. I what I am saying is I think their youth gives them the opportunity to take even more from it. Quote unquote youth. Berserker is still pretty young. <laughs> I think also if Cloud9 goes, there's just I mean, way more is young too. I don't care about like their actual I mean, impact is like 30, but okay. <laughs> Core J is was, also like 30. You know, I mean, yawn like, and APA, yawn and APA, yawn and APA. How old is APA? APA like, is like 23, isn't he? Isn't he like 22? Yeah, 22. How old is Fudge? How old is Fudge? 20. 21. I don't even think he can drink. Oh, he can drink? Okay. How old is Berserker? Berserker is 20. How old is, is Yeon? Yon's 23, bro. Like, and TL's just older. <laughs> just literally an older team. JoJo's younger than all of you. Like, C9 is li like just the objectively younger team. All right. right. Send, send Cloud9. Yeah, <laughs> just send Cloud9. <laughs> it's fucking, TL's dude. Worst you, and has less potential. Excellent. Dude, nobody wants to see this iteration. Like, do, do we want to see fucking Knight and Chovy versus APA? Do you think he's going to be I able to play a... APA talking shit to him in all chat. That would be sick. And then he just gets bodied. But I think that's a good experience. Do you want to see him try and play Aurelian Soul into like Knight and Chovy? Is that what you want? Or they're going to look at him the same way that people on Twitter look at those like pussy and bio bots. That's the same way that like Chovy and Knight are going to be looking at him. It'll, it'll be li literally. It'll, it'll be that irrelevant. Like they it's wouldn't even consider analogy. what he's saying. <laughs> my god um my fear is that cloud nine were doing so well in scrims they were they were scrim demoning pretty well going into the match against FlyQuest, and then they got bopped so 
I think that's the way that uh that that is the only information that I have and uh like leg up that Dude, I just has. I can't believe I just can't believe we live in a world where this iteration of TL that went 7 and 7 in the regular split is now in the finals weekend. Like what the fuck happened to North America? <laughs> I don't know, but it was a very fun split. Entertaining split with their conclusion coming up very soon. Uh it could have been it Shopify. Is- that would have been fun. Why couldn't it have been Shopify? Why couldn't it be Shopify? Because Fake God didn't do so well. Unlucky. What is the, who could have thought? Who could have saw, saw that coming? <laughs> yep. <laughs> who could have thought? <laughs> who could have known? Well, I, w- the biggest thing that I hope from Shopify is that they hold on to Revan because that dude does the best interviews <laughs> in, in, in the league. Uh, all right. There you have it. A lot, not many topics, but you knew what was coming and we went pretty deep in them. Uh, almost two hours of a show. Thanks to all of you for tuning on in. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to go get your slice of culture, head on over to LFN Culture as well. Monty and the crew are breaking down more Dune. Yeah, I, I keep to, getting the I, Dune like clips. Yeah, the uh, we have to... We're releasing an episode on Shogun soon that I need to work on. The FX series Shogun? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, coming out very soon. A great Asian and Asian American actors, actresses in that. So make sure to check that one out. Uh, let's see. Again, the I have an interview with Impact and Coach Sharks. Coach Sharks 1 is up right now. Head on over there. Uh, I will be at finals weekend, obviously, because I live down the street. I will also go to beforehand the FlyQuest and NRG viewing parties. So uh, I forgot where those ones are at. I think FlyQuest is at a pub. The NRG one is at their thing in downtown LA, their castle in downtown LA. I'll go to both those there so you can come say hi. If you don't have tickets to the finals, then I'll see you at the finals. Dom, what are you uh, doing this weekend? Outside of Uh, watching all the matches. Give me a real life thing. (laughs) This weekend? No, I mean, there's no time to do anything but watch all the matches this weekend. It's literally like 16, 17 hour days. That's the days that I can't do anything. Uh, What IRL thing are you doing this week? How about that? I'm not sure. When your motto comes here, we're doing a bunch of shit, though. So we'll see. All right. Some Yamato content to... Maybe uh, where's the where's the Yamato can, and Dom um, the sack live streams IRL streams. Been doing I, I did some I, I did a couple IRL streams with my girlfriend. We did a beer tier list. We went to a German pub and we did a beer tier list of like eleven German nice. beers. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was a pretty good stream. That was what nice. One. What one? And what was the worst? Winner loser. Um, the worst was like some. I, I don't even remember the name. I mean, actually, I could I can probably I can pull it up. Actually, I have it on my Twitter. What, what type the, of the beer best? Was it? Uh, it was, it was called Jeever. It was terrible. Jeez. It was like the worst. And then the best one was a Konich Ludwig hell. That was the best one of a tier list. Yeah. Konich. All right. Well, uh, I hope to continue to see more of that type of content, especially when Yamato comes, uh, to join you. Uh, chat's like our girlfriend. All right. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's what they call it. Our girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Nice view to share, Dom. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next week for more Power Spike action. Have a great week. <laughs>